Right now we're trying to find a good location for a shoot Courtney has coming up. She's a photographer, by the way. And trying to find some good lighting for this place. Super cute. Oh, that's awesome. There's so many photographers down here. So I want to talk a little about cheat days, how I handle them, and if I really believe in them in general. So what I do, what works for me, and this is the one instance where I'll say, do what works for you, because that is a big part of dieting, is just find out what method you can stick with. This whole thing is just sticking with it and being consistent. So I don't really like cheat days for me because I'm not very successful with them. Usually if I have a cheat day, not even just a cheat meal, but a day where I'm just like Saturdays or whatever I want, I just eat too much. There's cheat days and then there's going overboard and I go overboard. I can't just have a little extra stuff here and there. I mean, I could, but that's part of planning and part of my methodology for it. But if I just say, you can have whatever you want on Saturday, I have whatever I want on Saturday and wake up Sunday feeling like crap. And then there's a good chance that will turn into, well, I already feel like crap. So I'm gonna eat this pint of ice cream for breakfast and then it's just pff, downhill from there. So usually it takes a couple days to recover. And I just don't like doing that. I don't like chasing the losses from last week for the first few days of the next week. So what I like to do is have basically a cheat macro day. So from waking up, I don't worry about macros at all. 100%, I could have zero protein if that were even possible and I wouldn't worry about it. But I don't look at the day as a complete cheat day. So usually what I wanna do is get to dinner and still have a couple hundred calories left. And then if I go over after that, I don't worry too much about it, but I don't try to. So like today was my off macro day. What I did, I woke up, I had like six Oreos for breakfast. Then for lunch, I had like a combat crunch bar. So got a little protein in there and nostrum. And then I had more cookies and more candy throughout the day and some ice cream. So basically really low protein, really high um, fat and carbs and tons of sugar. But when I got to dinner, I still had about two or 300 calories left. And then I had a fairly small dinner and we made, I'll show you what we had. Dinner gone wrong. Courtney made what sounded pretty good. This, uh, that's chicken. It doesn't even look like it. It cooked so weird. This pineapple chicken and this teriyaki glaze. And none of us were able to eat it. I don't know what the deal is. The chicken got all weird and tastes like it's not done, but it's definitely done. And the glaze is just strange. So anyway, didn't eat that. I ended up just eating some of the rice. And then I had a couple more cookies after dinner. So I probably ended up about maximum four or 500 calories above my goal. And that's just because I ate what I wanted throughout the day. Didn't go crazy, but you know, like I said, woke up to six cookies. I mean, that's still not being, you know, super conservative, but it's also not nuts. But anyway, that's what I do. It works really well for me. I've done it for a while and that's what gives me the best results. And by the way, these strawberry shortcake Oreos are phenomenal. Cordy doesn't like them, so, you know, 50-50 on that. I don't think Arson's tried them yet. He always likes cookies though, so guarantee he'll like them. I really wish that you would do these in double stuff, but take what you can get. 
do what I do and just break them in half. Works really well. You're usually not too into the limited edition ones. There's kind of lackluster, but this is a winner. I'm really starting to like the non-chocolate Oreos now. Don't be wrong, I still love the chocolate ones, but I can appreciate a non-chocolate Oreo now too.